Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to a spear shot challenger panting guide. And you're probably wondering who the hell is this? Well, I'm a streamer who won Tricks Pantheon. I peaked around 1160 LP challenger in season 11, which was around top 50 EU West at the time. And uh, I just think Pantheon's handsome in the face. Now for the first order of business, the roots. For the keystone, you want to either be running PTA or Conqueror. The reason these two runes are so optimal on Pantheon is because he can insta stack either of them with an empowered W. This lets you set up combos efficiently and allows you to maximize damage in the middle of trades and combinations. As for the second tree, I run Inspiration, Biscuit Delivery and Time Warp Tonic. Now these two runes allow me to go for some crazy trades early. I'm aware they don't scale so well, but they do allow me to look for early kills that actually help me snowball into the late game. Although, other trees like Domination with Ingenious Hunter and Sudden Impact, or even Relentless Hunter and Sudden Impact, do definitely work. Even builds like Resolve Tree with Bone Plating and Unflinching, those two definitely do function well on Pantheon. They definitely scale better too, but I just prefer the early power in the laning phase. So this is completely playstyle dependent, but again, this is my guide, so I'm showing you what I would be doing. As for summoners, you do want to be running Flash, Ignite for that cheeky kill potential in the laning phase. There's definitely a possibility for teleport into matchups where you don't have much kill potential. Good examples would be Orn, Malphite, any sort of hard tank that you cannot kill in the laning phase. Alright, let's take it easy and start from the beginning. What are you going to start with? You've got two main options, either a Corrupting Potion or a Longsword and Refillable. Now with Corrupting Potion, this is going to be your go-to build for the majority of the games. It's a solid, non-controversial start where you get HP, mana, and it works really well with your Warp Tonic and the biscuits you get later on in the laning phase. It basically has everything you need. And it gives you an abundance of trade potential. As for the Longsword Refillable start, now I really do feel like this is an underrated build because it has its place in the game. Ideally, you want to be building a longsword and refillable if you have early kill potential in the first few levels of the laning phase. If your laner has the resolve tree, don't even risk it. Because if they have bone plating, then you definitely don't have early kill potential. So if they're running resolve, just stick to the nice, non-controversial corrupting potion. Everyone loves corrupting potion. But if they're not running resolve and you do have early kill potential, don't be afraid to start W with a longsword refillable and go into that lane level 1 and look for some legs. Okay, moving on to itemization. Now this is where it gets tricky. Pantheon's got a very flexible playstyle and an even more flexible item set. You've got four main build paths. Eclipse Cleaver, Eclipse Yomus, Yomus Sundara or Sundara Cleaver. The big four. Let's start off with Eclipse Cleaver. Now the idea behind this build is you want to be building this if you have a lead early into one or more tanks on the enemy team. Because you have a lead early, you can continue to abuse it by building an aggressive lethality item like Eclipse. And you get a Cleaver second so you can finish it early on so when you do have team fights at some point around Baron or 20 minutes in, you can actually win it and shred through the front line. The best of both worlds, this is a secure and solid build almost every game. Option 2, Eclipse Yomus. Now this build I rarely go for because I often don't have the opportunity. This is the build I go for if I'm versing a full team of squishies and I go on early lead in lane. The idea is I've got so much damage I can literally kill them all in one combo. But remember, if you're building this, make sure you build HP 3rd, whether it's a Cleaver, Sterex, or even an Edge of Night, just make sure you have some HP so you don't get insta one shot. Third, my favorite build path, Yomu's Sandra. Just gorgeous. Now the idea is you finish Yomu's first because it just covers all of Pantheon's weaknesses, which is pretty much he's a mobile. And the Yomu's gives you that mobility that you need whether it's engaging in fights or disengaging, or just giving you extra success on your rotations, all round a 10 out of 10 item for Pantheon. I follow it with a Sundara, because Sundara just gives me all the stats that I need, HP, ability haste, percent HP damage, and just overall survivability in teamfights. Two for two, these are the best items you can have on Pantheon. 
I only ever build Yomu Sandra if they've got a reasonable comp with not too much frontline, but let's say one or two bruises. So this is a great build if they don't have heavy frontline, but they maybe have one or two bruises and the rest are squishies. It works well into comps like that. Option four, Sandra Cleaver. Now this is a safe build that you can resort to if you're even or behind in lane against a tank or multiple tanks. The idea is, well, if you're even or behind, chances are on your first back, you can't kill your laner anymore anyway, because it's an Orn and he's coming back with a Warden's Mail or Tabby's. Good luck killing that guy. And so you're forced into building into a Sunderer, so you don't just get run down and you can build safe items like Phage and Kindle Gem that will actually keep you alive in lane, as opposed to a Serrated Dirk that literally won't do anything because he's going full tank. In addition, you've got the choice of Cleaver second. This actually is efficient into tanks because you do need cleaver as soon as possible so you can actually hit your power spike and actually deal with the tanks appropriately. All in all, Sandra Cleaver is very effective into a team that have a lot of tanks because you can burn through them and you almost feel unkillable because of the amount of bonus HP you have. As for items built later on into the game, there are a multitude of options. It's massively dependent on the game you're playing itself. Do you need some armor? Well, if that's the case, Get yourself a death stance or a GA. Sounds great. Do they have a lot of magic damage? All right, that's great too. You could either buy a more of Marmaltus or a force of nature. Do they have a lot of shielding in their team? Well, brother, get yourself a serpent and stop being stupid. Do they have a lot of healing? All right then, can punk chainsword or perhaps hold the executioners and spend the money on a better item. If they don't have any of that, well then you can definitely go straight into either a Sterex, an Edge of Night, or perhaps even something cheeky like Blade of the Rune King. But I wouldn't build Blade of the Rune King, alright? Uh, I don't like the item. It's viable, I just don't like it. I wouldn't build it, alright? I wouldn't build it, I don't like that. And when it comes to boots, there are really only three good options. Mercury Treads, if they have a lot of CC and magic damage. Tabbies, if they are heavily auto-based and have a lot of AD. Or Lucidity Boots, which I often don't build because my Yomu Sandra Cleaver equal to 60 Ability Haste and Ability Haste after about 60 has massively diminishing returns. So I just feel like it's inefficient. So I often tend to go with either Tabbies or Mercury Treads. Now it's time to discuss the game itself. What the hell do you even do in the laning phase? First thing you always want to be doing is making sure to check whether your lane is running Resolve or not. Because if your laner has bone plating, it will drastically change how you're going to be playing the lane in itself. The playstyle of Pantheon is very versatile and it should change depending on the matchup. If you're reversing a champion like Kennen, a champ who doesn't have much disengaged like a vein condemn, but she's also ranged, what you want to be looking for is an opportunity to look for an empowered W at any chance you can get. It's pretty straightforward and pretty brain dead if you ask me. You just have to make sure her bone plating's down every time you look for an engage. So either land the tap Q, or if you're uncomfortable getting in and out of range and you don't have the spacing skills required, brother just charge a Q and try and land it. And if you can't land the charge Q, then brother you're doomed, all right? Stand the tower and pray to God because you're not competent enough to win the laning phase. I don't know what to tell you, all right? I don't know what to tell you. However, if your lane is someone like Jax, Riven, Darius, champs that try their best to get an auto range of you, right? They beat the soul out of you in melee range. What you want to be doing is spacing as well as you can and landing your tap Q right on the tip of the Q just so they cannot retaliate in time. The idea is to make sure you're landing as many tap Qs as possible and to disengage as soon as they look for a crazy engage. Whether it's a W and path away or an E and path away, just make sure you're nullifying their engage as soon as they attempt it. You have both engage and poke. So you can really set tempo in the lane when you start getting a few good tap Q trades. All it takes is maybe four or five good tap Qs where you don't take any damage. Because if your lane is at 60% HP and you're at 100%, now you've set tempo in the lane and every one of your engages should be either forcing them out or getting the kill. Because there's no way they're going to get you down from 100% to zero before you get them down from 60 to zero, especially when you're running Ignite. So pretty much all your trades are just going to force them back or get them killed. Remember, just make sure you're spacing correctly into those all-in matchups and not letting them in auto range. Use your poke. The only issue is you don't have a 1v1 ult and it's likely that your laner does, unless he's Shen. Which means... Chances are you cannot fight this brother anymore, you just have to respect him. 
Now this doesn't mean that they're impervious to damage. You can still definitely kill them if they misplay, but you're less likely to just win in all-in trades. You also have the possibility to look for rotations. Now this is make or break. Rotations can either decide how the game's gonna go or straight up just lose you the game. So make sure you're rotating at the right time at the right place. The only time I'd ever look for bot is if it's a guaranteed secure double or we're trying to set up for a dragon at some point and I'm probably gonna get there and get out fast back to top lane before my laner gets seven platings and I miss 13 waves. Remember there's a lot of consequence when looking for a massive rotation like that because it's going to take you some time to actually return to the lane. And if your lane is there, chances are he's going to get a level lead or at best a big gold lead because he's going to be cashing in plates and CS. So unless you're getting a lot in that rotation, an example being a double kill, it tends not to be worth it. So when you're looking for rotations, make sure it's justified. Make sure the reward justifies giving up plates and CS. If I'm looking for rotations, it's often to secure Dragon or to pick up shutdowns. Otherwise, I take the safe route and just get back to lane or look for a kill on my laner when they're overextended, licking their lips trying to take my platings. Now, a rotation I often look for is their R to mid lane. Now, this rotation actually doesn't have too much consequence because even if it doesn't work out, well, great. Now, after you've shoved, you've roamed, it hasn't worked. You come back to lane and you catch the wave after your laner has pushed it back into you because he panics and sees you roaming the map. Now I'm often looking for a mid rotation, not solely for the kill or even to give my laner the kill. It's just to gain prio for the dragon. One thing people forget is if I'm trying to secure Drake and I can't have too much of an impact from top lane, what I can do instead is look for a rotation or to mid lane giving my mid lane prior, whether it's killing the enemy mid laner or forcing their sums or forcing them to reset, we've secured prior, which gives us priority on Drake. I then spam ping dragon and let my team know that it's free right now because enemy team reset, so if we're gonna do it, we do it now. And then I go back to top lane and make sure I catch the wave. This way I don't put myself behind, but I also indirectly impact who gets the Drake. And now you're probably wondering, well, Spear, what the hell am I supposed to do in the late game? during team fights, how the hell am I supposed to play Pantheon? I feel like he falls off. Well, if you've itemized correctly and you play team fights appropriately, he shouldn't be that bad late game. Frankly, he feels decent. If the enemy team have a heavy front line, make sure you're building Cleaver as soon as possible. Ideally, second item. You want Cleaver before 20 minutes against a team comp like that because the sooner you get Cleaver, the faster you'll be able to win team fights. And if you don't have Cleaver by 20 minutes, then the next fight's going to decide Baron. And if they get Baron, that's going to decide the game. And you solo lost by not getting armor shred for yourself and for your team. So make sure you've itemized correctly. And from there, you assess how you're going to play team fights based on the enemy comp and your own. Remember, Pantheon's very versatile and there's various ways to play him. You can play him as a sort of support and just peel for your fed carry and get the assassins off her, him during a team fight. Or you can look to tunnel vision the enemy backline and try and get some picks and maybe flash out or Yomus to escape. Or just shred the front line with your team and be your own front line for your team. So it's really comp dependent. You really have to assess when you are in, make sure you're looking around to see if your team can follow. Champs like Rakan have really good all-in potential and can follow you when you are. However, if your team comp looks something like this, chances are when you are into the enemy team, they can't really follow. So sometimes you're genuinely better off just not R-ing in altogether. Unless the fight's already started, then you can R in and well, your team can't really follow up because they're already there. There's nothing to follow up on. Also, enemy comps. Be aware to enemy compositions. If they have a team comp like this, where they have Syndra and Thresh as soon as you are in, Chances are not only are you not going to be able to double you, you're not going to be able to move and you're going to die before you can actually lift a finger. And you're better off killing the enemy team with your own instead of looking for these solo Rambo plays where your team can't follow and when you land in R, you probably can't move for 10 seconds. Do not be afraid to adjust your playstyle to the game you're playing. 
You aren't always an assassin and you don't have the privilege to be an assassin every single game. Sometimes your team definitely do need you to be an assassin, but there are other times where it's more optimal and you're better suited just clearing through the enemy front line with your team. Remember you're empowered W with PTA applies 8 to 12% vulnerability to the target so they take more damage from all sources. That's useful for you and your team. Combined with Cleaver Shred, you can genuinely burst tanks. Just remember to itemize appropriately and change it depending on the game you're playing and you should be fine later on into the game as long as you adjust your playstyle to the enemy comp and your own. Now you're probably wondering what, what the hell is the combo? What combo? Let me hear it. Well, the combo you're going to be playing around the most is the Empowered W, Q, Auto, Empowered E, either Chase or Disengage. And the movement speed on the Empowered E allows you to keep up with the opponent or disengage and run back to safety under your tower. If you're chasing with the Empowered E, you're likely to follow up with an Auto into Q, which helps you actually get that bit of extra damage off which is especially useful into mobile Sansa guns like Akali, Fiora, Riven, because realistically this is the only mobility you have in your kit and this is the only way you're going to be able to keep up with highly mobile champions like both. You also have the option of waiting with the Empowered Q after an Empowered WQ Auto and just waiting if you can keep up with your laner to throw an Empowered Q rather than using an Empowered E. Now this works in scenarios where you can keep up with your laner and they're not just Lightning McQueen running out of there before you can get another auto or queue in. Another combo is the 3 stack combo. Now this is pretty basic. Ideally you do not want to be going into fights with less than 3 stacks. It's going to be hell and you're probably going to do no damage. So the 3 stack combo is W, Auto, Q. Pretty straightforward and it really can't go wrong. Each combo is dependent on the situation. Just remember, you often want to be playing around in Power W early into the game because it does the most damage and it stacks your runes, your Conqueror or your PTA, which is massively going to have an impact on how the fight's going to go. This doesn't mean always W, you have to adapt to the game itself. If your lane is set, chances are you can't just W into him and pray to God, he'll kill you. So make sure that it's appropriate in the situation, your lane is low enough to actually look for an engaging on, and then you can start looking for an Empowered W. But ideally, in the midst of a skirmish, you do want to be looking for an Empowered W over anything else early into the game. And I mean, if it's late into the game, and there are three targets hugging each other on the enemy team, don't hesitate to land that Empowered Q instead for more overall damage. Well, ladies and gents, hopefully that's covered everything and answered all of your questions. And uh, good luck with your climb. And if you still can't climb, well, then uh, God bless you. All right, you need help. No, no, you need the divine power. Have you ever tried being religious? Brother, you need to be religious. Like, that's what you need. I can't help you anymore, brother. That's the truth. All right. No, but seriously, guys, I appreciate all the support, for real. I really do. Um, I appreciate all the support. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll be seeing you in the next video.